The DIG is a project that's very much at the core of what progressive education is. It's, it exemplifies what we try and do here at the Orchard School. When our students are engaged in the DIG, it is a project that they work on all day for a week. They're not going around to separate individual classes, but they are using all of the information and content and skills that they've learned in individual disciplines and they're tying them together, which is a big part of what progressive education is. Our students are working to create these cultures and create these civilizations and create these artifacts. And as they do, they have to bring in skills and information from different disciplines. Our students are writing. Our students are using what they've learned about art and construction and color and how to build an object as they create their artifacts. Our students are using information from archeology span and their knowledge of the scientific method and scientific processes as they're doing their excavation. It's tying together individual disciplines, bringing them together in one single project. It is Progressive Ed. So we started by actually looking at a culture that's very familiar to us, which is the Orchard School. Um, and we looked at examples of material culture, which is the things, the artifacts of our school, and then also non-material culture, so the values, the beliefs, norms, symbols of our culture. And what I wanted kids to realize that these are connected, that our material culture and non-material culture are very connected. So we started by practicing our analytical skills um, here at Orchard, and the kids worked together to create presentations about Orchard culture. And we even had a contest where whoever was, did the best job as voted by their peers got to take over the Orchard Instagram page for a day. Um, so it was really exciting because we used all these different primary and secondary source documents about Orchard School and our social media accounts were one of those primary source documents um, and we analyzed them to see what are the messages that we're sending out about our school, what is our mission statement, who are we, and then the kids got to kind of take that on and do that themselves. Kids who don't always shine in class really shined in this kind of learning experience because it's so hands-on. There's all these opportunities for kids to be leaders in different ways, and um, it's just incredibly engaging to get to create a culture and bury it in the ground, and then get to uncover another culture and really have to analyze it and take on this role as an archeologist. It's not something they've ever had the opportunity to do before. And it was really exciting to see the student engagement at such high levels. The students brainstorm and they come up with their own individual ideas, usually a jigsaw or a puzzle of different students' ideas all put together. So basically it's your work. after the apocalypse where we got bombed by someone, it's not specified, but it basically knocked out the power and pretty much everyone died except for like the tribes of people in um, Las Vegas. So they live in like the ruins and stuff and it's completely dark because all the bombs knocked out all the light. But there's like every so often like the neon signs will come on like one day a year. So that's like their religious holidays when it comes on. And so since the nuclear bomb, since all the food they eat is like contaminated, it causes them to have genetic mutation and one of the biggest is the big foreheads and that's what they value most is like you don't have the big forehead, you're not going to get anywhere. And the bigger the forehead you have, the bigger the job you have, and the more likely you are to become the dictator. Six. Danny, what does it mean? Danny, you want to do stuff? Once all of that is done, we take all of the artifacts from one culture and we bury them in the pit. And this is usually actually done strategically. Our students actually put together a plan for how they're going to bury those artifacts. Is there a story that they can tell from the sequence that those artifacts end up in? Can they represent the layout of a town based on where they put the artifacts in a dig pit? Once that's done, the dig groups rotate. So the dig groups go to a new dig pit and now their job as cultural designers is done and their job of an archeologist begins. Welcome to the
So once all the artifacts are out of the ground, it's time for each dig group to start interpreting their culture. So we know this day is like a puzzle. The students spend several hours sitting around the murals and the artifacts and everything that they pulled up from the civilization and they try and make sense of it. It's very Da Vinci code in each classroom for, for a couple hours while that process happens. Yeah, because there's a hall. There is a, yeah, with a ring in it. Yeah, I, I saw it in the first thing. Wait, 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 that means that box has to be no, an S. that's an E. There's a oh, oh, it is. E S. M-A-R-R-I-A-G Then, the students take all the information that they gathered from the culture and they prepare short little presentations for an event that we call the Confrontation. It's a um, great practice for creating an argument and supporting with evidence, and it's a great activity, um, once again, to involve students in public speaking, which by this point in their orchard careers, they've done a great deal of. Um, it's, it's usually an impressive event. Culture excavation! the end of the dig. It's absolutely my favorite time of the year. It's my favorite week of seventh grade. Um, I'm so thankful that it's something that I get to teach each and every year, year after year.